Well, Scott, uh, the whole um, purpose of this project has been to study and illustrate and describe parent materials. What are some of the things that we um, should think about in terms of what parent materials uh, define in terms of soils? Well, parent materials are one of the, the five classic soil forming factors. And uh, we've, we have been focusing on parent materials, and for good reason. Uh, I think we consider the attributes of a soil that come from the parent material are the inherited uh, properties of a soil that will influence the direction of soil development, uh, the timing of soil development, and ultimately, uh, to a large extent, the nature of soil development uh, as it occurs over time. Mm -hmm. Two of the uh, sort of features that we get from parent material would be its physical properties and uh, some of the chemistry that's involved. So. Yeah, well, uh, let's think about some of the, the key chemical attributes that are inherited from parent material. Uh, probably uh, most importantly uh, on the chemical side would be soil pH. Uh, and pH is a dynamic property that will change over time, but it fundamentally uh, controls the type and the rates of chemical processes that will occur in the soil. Uh, I think uh, another important aspect of, of soil chemistry is the, the type of uh, uh, elements that are in the soil, the, uh, the cations, the base status of a soil or the lack of bases in a soil. These are all the, uh, to a large extent, chemical properties inherited from parent material. Right. These uh, could also in addition to being uh, plant nutrients, uh, could be the presence or freedom of toxic uh, elements as well. Yeah. But uh, also tied in with that would be uh, the particle size and the surface area. So moving into physical Phys properties, uh, you know, what's the importance of that? All right, so on the, on the physical properties, primarily, as you pointed out, particle size. Uh, whether we've, uh, we've got a fine textured parent material or a coarse textured parent material, uh, the nature of the, the particles themselves, uh, the stoniness of a soil, uh, these are all key inherited properties that will influence soil formation as well. Uh, particle size is really critical, Art, in the way that it will affect both the movement of water in soils and the retention of water in soils. Uh, finer particles have a larger surface area, a larger re chemically reactive surface area, so uh, finer textured soils tend to be able to hold nutrients and to a certain uh, aspect, water as well, given this larger surface area with soils with finer particle sizes. One of the other soil forming factors is relief, topography, which also plays a role in how that parent material evolves and things happen with times. If we think of it, uh, we start with our parent materials, then of course we have our topography or relief, as we've said. And relief, really important because it controls uh, the distribution of water on the landscape. Uh, certainly one of the key, uh, key functions of relief. Uh, convex landscape positions, like the one that we're standing on right here, will tend to shed water. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously then, concave landscape positions will tend to collect water. And uh, again, it's the timing and the amount and the persistence of water in the soil that will have big factors mm -hmm. in terms of controlling development. So mm -hmm. that's one uh, aspect, I think, of relief, is how it controls water distribution. Uh, of course, uh, relief also g generates uh, slope and aspect, and uh, aspect being the direction of a particular landscape facet. Uh, South-facing slopes, for instance, will receive more solar radiation than north-facing slopes. Slopes, of course, are more, more susceptible to erosion, erosion by water, and erosion is a sort of a, a counterforce against soil development. So often we see on slopes uh, this this battle that's going on between removal of materials through erosion and the soil forming processes that are going on and we end up with some sort of a dynamic equilibrium there. Maybe it's time that we talk about biology as well. We see a certain amount of uh, plant material around us. Uh, let's talk about uh, biota. Right. Um, well, our, I think one of the key definitions of what is soil is it has to be a living, a living entity and it has to c uh, contain organic uh, material. In these transported materials, 
like these glacial materials that we're standing on right here. Other than perhaps uh, small populations of uh, cyanobacteria and fungi and algae, um, that's really all that makes up the initial uh, biological component of these soils. But, but over time, uh, as we can see, we get a succession of plant species coming onto the site and slowly the accumulation, both on the surface and within the soil, of organic matter. And uh, organic matter is largely composed of carbon. And so what we are doing over time is essentially establishing and building a terrestrial carbon pool in the soil. Most of the planet's carbon, organic carbon, is in fact stored in soil. Which I think uh, brings us to the next soil forming factor, and that being climate. So the type of biota that we have and the quantity is going to be related to climate. So uh, you want to pursue that yeah, uh, topic a bit? I guess really of all of our soil forming factors, uh, climate's the real driver here that's going to take us, uh, take us home, so to speak, uh, and, uh, and control the direction of soil development. Uh, uh, specifically when we talk about climate, I guess we're thinking about precipitation and temperature, seasonal temperatures, mean annual temperatures, uh, the distribution of precipitation through the year. Uh, these really are the drivers that'll take this parent material, the suite of organisms, uh, this particular topographic setting, and take it to the, uh, I guess it's uh, full soil development. So that brings us to our last soil forming factor, and you've already mentioned it from time to time, which is time, <laughs> time. right? Uh, yeah, we, we chose this site uh, right, because we thought it gave a good illustration of time, uh, in this case specifically relating to primary succession. Uh, the ground that we're standing on has uh, only been deglaciated for about 50 years, and uh, yet we have uh, small subal subalpine fir and Engelmann spruce uh, beginning to establish and grow. Um, our parent material in this case is a, is a quartzite, so it's, it's acidic. Um, and, uh, and these are all acidophiles, in other words, plants that are uh, readily adapted to acidic conditions, so they've moved right in within 50 years. Uh, give it more time, uh, we'll see the establishment of a, of a forest. Uh, okay, much like we see on the hills around us here. Just exactly like what yep. we see. And if you look behind us, Art, you can see there's a, actually a break point between full forest cover and then uh, smaller trees, more scattered trees, more bare ground as we move up here. We're just looking at influence of time here. The lower part of the valley hasn't been glaciated since the uh, early Holocene uh, up to this area here, which was quite re only very recently deglaciated. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, at the end, it's a combination of these factors um, that we mentioned, parent materials, uh, organisms, relief, and, uh, and climate. Uh, acting over time. Uh, but you know there's another factor too that's uh, becoming more and more important all the time and you, you reminded me of it and that was the human interaction uh, with, with the soil. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Well I think uh, there's probably on a global scale and we see climate change happening and changing uh, hydrologic regimes and carbon regimes. These have potential to affect soil formation on a large scale. But uh, also, I, I'm an agriculturalist, and I know what, what an impact agricultural development has on soils. It can be a dramatic change in, in uh, a soil profile. And uh, likewise, forest management and uh, other types of human activities cause the, the soil development clock to be reset with a new right. set of circumstances and a new actor, that is human beings. The good point, uh, in pedology now we see the movement towards new classification systems around uh, man-made soils or human-induced processes in soils that we call the anthrosols. And uh, this, is a, this is a new direction for pedology and I think it reflects the importance of the human influence on soils that you speak about.